Welcome to another mythology video. Last October a very curious mathematical wheel popped up on Reddit. This wheel gives a previously unknown incredibly simple way to visualize and explain the magic behind an ingenious gadget that was invented 400 years ago. Until quite recently this gadget was the engineering counterpart to the doctor's stethoscope and during the 20th century alone about 40 million of these gadgets were produced. What's this ingenious gadget? Can you guess? And what's this mysterious reddit wheel? Well that's what today's video is about. Buckle up and prepare for some real magic. Okay here's the simple setup. We start with a wheel and a rubber band that's labeled with the numbers from 0 to 10. The 0 end of the rubber band is fixed to a wall and the 10 end is fixed to the top of the wheel. Now start spinning the wheel in the clockwise direction. Watch what happens. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Okay, so the rubber band wraps around the wheel and it does so without slipping. As a consequence the numbers spread out more and more along the wheel. All clear? Great. Let's keep on spinning. There, there. Okay, so far we've just dealt with the integers from 1 to 10 but of course there are other numbers in between those integers. In particular let's highlight the tens decimal fractions. There. Now the inventor of the wheel chose the wheel to be of just the right size so that after one revolution the 1 will end up in exactly the same spot as the 10. Watch. Okay, well that was pretty cool. <laughs> Can you see what's happening? On the rubber band there is now a 0.1 where originally there was a 1, there is a 0.2 where originally there was a 2 and so on. Now can you see where all those 0 point numbers go when we rotate the wheel a second time? Well obviously in the same spots as 1, 2, 3, 4 up to 10. Give the wheel another spin so more stretching and you end up here and so on. What all this shows is that all numbers that just differ in the positions of their decimal points end up in exactly the same spot on the wheel. For example 7, 0 0.7, 0 0.07, 0 0.007 and so on. All these numbers just differ in the position of their decimal points and all of them occupy the same spot on the wheel. Of course if instead of 10 our initial rubber band went up to 100 or 1000 or whatever <laughs> we'd get exactly the same scale and so it's clear that this diagram also extends to all larger numbers. Maybe a bit unusual but definitely not hard to understand so far right? Again all numbers that just differ in the position of the decimal point sit on one particular point of the wheel. There and there. Okay maybe what we've seen so far is a tiny little bit magical but where is that really potent magic that I promised you? Well just around the corner. To begin make a copy of our strange scale. Let's spin the outer scale a bit. Have a close look at how the numbers on the two scales line up. Can you see anything remarkable? No? <laughs> okay there is the 2 over 1 right at the top. Look again 4 over 2. Can you see it now? The ratio of the outer number to inner number is always the same. 2 over 1 is 2, 4 over 2 is 2, 6 over 3 is 2, 8 over 4, yep. 1 over 5, uh, that seems strange until you remember that the 1 here also stands for 10 and 10 over 5 is 2. Great. Next, nothing over 6. Well, it's not really nothing. Let's just refine our scale a little bit. Aha, 1.2 over 6 or in other words 12 over 6, that's 2. 14 over 7, yep, yep, yep. Back to 2 over 1 which of course also stands for 20 over 10 and 200 over 100 and so on. Curious huh? But is it maybe just a coincidence that all these ratios are the same? What if we spin the outer disk further? There, 3 over 1 yeah, is the same as 6 over 2, is the same as 9 over 3. Pretty cool isn't it? In fact it's possible to prove that this always works. Spin the outer disk any way you like and all the matched up outer and inner numbers will be in the same ratio. Always. Amazing. And not only amazing but also super useful. Can you see why? No? Okay as I said green over black is the same as red over blue. 3 over 1 well that's just 3. Now solve for the red number. So green times blue equals red. Always. This means that we can use our strange wheel gadget to multiply numbers. 
we'll do this in a second, but before we do this, let's refine our scale a little bit more. Great, now let's say we want to multiply 1.3 times, times what? Well, let's multiply 1.3 by itself, there. Both the green and the blue are 1.3. So what is 1.3 times 1.3? Well, the red, 1.7. Well, actually not quite. We have to move the red arrow one step back to align it with the blue 1.3 arrow at the bottom. And that takes us to 1.69. So 1.3 times 1.3 equals 1.69. And of course, on our strange wheel, 1.3 also stands for 13. And so we also find that 13 times 13 is equal to 169. Okay, but 13 times 13, I can do in my head. So is this actually useful? Yes, it is. <laughs> let's do another more complicated example. Let's multiply pi by something. Pi, that's roughly 3.14. There, 3.14 times what? Well, let's go for the other mathematical superconstant, e, that's roughly 2.72. For this, we just have to spin both wheels locked together until we see 2.72 <laughs> at the bottom. Okay, so let's navigate to 2.72 at the bottom. First, we spin to 2.5. Okay, now here's 2.6, 2.7, and finally 2.72. That's 2.72 at the bottom. And we can read off the product at the top about 8.54. The exact result is 8.5408. Well, 8.54 is good enough for most practical purposes. In fact, the precision of this gadget is close to three significant figures. Not bad, huh? Especially if your life depends on quickly figuring out a reasonable estimate and you forgot your computer. But that's not all. Our gadget is also really good at dividing. Just quickly an easy example, 2 divided by 5. Okay, find the 2 on the outside and the 5 on the inside. Now just spin the two wheels locked together until you see the 1 at the bottom. The result is 4 at the top. 2 divided by 5 is 4, what? Well, of course not, but with all these calculations you always have to remember that the true answer will be the number in front of you with the position of the decimal point shifted appropriately. This mental shifting of the decimal point takes a bit of practice, but is really not that hard. Anyway, in this case, the answer is clearly not 4, but 0 0.4. Can you see what we have here? A mechanical device that can easily multiply and divide. Hmm. Yep, as a lot of you will have guessed by now, our machine is a circular slide rule. Just by winding a rubber band around a wheel, We've reinvented the incredible analog computer that ruled the world of engineering for 400 years. Fantastic! <laughs> the rubber band also supplies a spectacular one-glance explanation for why this gadget works. An explanation that primary school kids can understand. I'll keep that explanation for the killer finale of this video, something to look forward to. But first, it's time for your history lesson. Are you taking notes? There will be a test. <laughs> the circular slide rule was invented in 1622 by the mathematician William Outred of Cambridge. Slide rules are pretty rare nowadays, but most of you would have seen a slide rule before in thrift shops or op shops as we Australians call them or somewhere similar. But of course, those slide rules would have been straight, something like this. Well, maybe not quite like this, more like this. A slide rule that fits into your hand. Such a slide rule features a sliding part in the middle, there, slide, 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 okay. The main attraction of this linear slide rule is the highlighted green part, which on closer inspection is really just a straightened out version of our circular scale. Have a look. There. So the scale used for both devices is really exactly the same. Also, in either device, the two copies of the scale are used to multiply and divide numbers in essentially the same way. Well, in the linear slide rule, we'll slide the middle part instead of rotating one scale against the other. And some Pac-Man wraparound action is sometimes required when we run out of slide rule when sliding. In theory, 
the circular slide rule is the better device because it does not require any Pac-Man action. However, in practice, it's a lot easier to make linear slide rules that are super precise and user friendly. And so, most slide rules that were produced were linear and hence also the name slide rule. <laughs> in any case, from the time they were invented in 1622, these devilishly ingenious analog computers were produced in the millions until the advent of the electronic computing machines. But even after modern computers had taken over, slide rules were and are still often used as emergency backup computers. For example, all Apollo missions carried slide rules and these were often used during flight. One slide rule even made it to the moon. And even today slide rules are still produced for emergency use by aircraft pilots. In fact, this particular slide rule built into the E6B flight computer will be used for many hundreds of years to come as evidenced by this snapshot from the distant future. <laughs> if you want to play with the slide rule right now, just download one of the many really nice slide rule apps. I've included links to some of my favorites in the comments. If you're interested in investing in a bit of a conversation piece, consider buying a fancy pilot watch with built-in circular slide rule. You never know, <laughs> this might come in handy when your fancy CAS calculator fails you in the middle of a high stakes exam. If you know of any good slide rule tidbits and stories off the beaten track, please share them with the rest of us in the comments. Of course, no mythology video is complete without addressing the why. Okay, so what's the source of the magic of the slide rule? One new super simple answer also uses nothing but the new Reddit rubber band setup. <laughs> Ready to be amazed? Here we go. What we need to explain is why, no matter how we rotate the scales, matching numbers always give the same ratio. Well, to start with, remove the scales except for the two and the one on top of the scales. Attach rubber bands. Now, obviously, the rubber band at the bottom is stretched twice as much as the one at the top. This means that any of the numbers at the top is always exactly double the number just below. Easy, right? But now remember, we can recreate the scales on the two wheels by simply rotating both wheels once. And since the rubber bands don't slip, corresponding numbers on both rubber bands will keep their doubling alignment throughout the synchronized rotation. Consequently, the ratio of matching numbers on the outside and the inside is always the same. Well, up to shifting decimal points, of course. <laughs> and obviously we can do the exactly the same thing for three ratio or pi ratio or whatever. This always works. And so, ta-da! <laughs> what an amazingly simple proof. Absolutely made my day when I first discovered it. How about you? Okay, okay, I'm sure the clue among you are going log, 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 log on. Yes, yes, pre-rubber band. Any proper discussion of slide rules would have been built around the properties of logarithms. So to finish off, let me also quickly show you where logarithms are hiding in our magic scales. Let's say the original rubber band is one unit long. Then a little bit of calculus shows that the wheel has a circumference equal to the natural logarithm of 10. Well, maybe one of you maths demons can supply a proof in the comments. Hmm. All of you non-demons who don't breathe logarithms, just relax and go with the flow. We're almost there. Anyway, in general, the clockwise distance along the wheel between the one at the top and one of the numbers from one to 10 is the natural logarithm of that number. For example, the distance between one and two is equal to the natural logarithm of two. And the distance between one and three is equal to the natural logarithm of three. Let's highlight this distance on the second scale, okay. There, that blue distance is equal to the natural logarithm of three. Now, we want to multiply two times three. Remember how that works? Just rotate the green two to the top. From earlier, we also know that two times three equals six is opposite the blue three. Yep, there it is. Now the distance from the outer one to the six is the natural logarithm of six but that red distance is also green plus blue. And so log two plus log three is equal to log six. Or log two plus log three is equal to log of two times three. 
There you have it. The magic of the slide rule illuminated from a different angle, right? The sum of the logarithms of two numbers is the logarithm of the product of the two numbers. And so from the logarithmic point of view, what the slide rule does is to translate a complicated operation of multiplying two numbers into the much simpler operation of adding two numbers. Hmm. Historically, the invention of the slide rule by William Outred in 1622 was a direct consequence of the invention of logarithms by John Napier in 1614, just a couple of years earlier. There, that's Napier with one of his famous log tables. Fantastic stuff, don't you agree? And so powerful and at the same time so incredibly easy to understand when you look at it in just the right way. Okay, today's coding challenge. Can you code a circular slide rule with infinite precision? So what I'm after is a virtual slide rule in which you can zoom in on a dynamically refining scale. This has not been done before I think, should be fun. As usual, I'll put my wish list for this app in a comment pinned to the top of the comment section below. And as usual, anybody who comes up with an app like this will automatically enter into a draw for one of my and Marty's books. Okay, now to finish off, the wheel of logarithms that inspired this video was invented by Dmitry Zagalovsky, who is a software engineer and entrepreneur based in New York City and who in his spare time is also one of the directors of the New York Math Circle. Here then is Dmitry's original post on Reddit as well as the wheel the way he presented it. And that's all for today.